Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by coming down the podcast where we handle facts over feelings. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez. Show my, I have another rant for you today. It is in the world of the WNBA, and no, it is not Caitlin Clark related, and no, it is not Angel Reese related. So what is uh, what is it all about? And it's not about the WNBA finals that start tonight as this video will be posted almost immediately so you can get it tonight, 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 tonight. It is about the Golden State Valkyries, the expansion team of the WNBA, the league that has not made any profit ever, and them hiring their new head coach. This is, as the guy KC says, woke United Methodist, whatever it is he says, listen to that stuff all the time, I find it hilarious. This is the WNBA with their DEI hire. I said it. This hiring of the gold by the Golden State Valkyries is a DEI hire. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because we have to make sure that everyone gets a everyone gets a prize. Everyone gets a book. Everyone gets a treat. Everyone gets everyone gets something. So who does who do the Golden State Valk does the Golden State Valkyrie hire? They hired the Las Vegas Aces assistant Natalie Nakase or Nakase. I, I I I apologize if I mispronounced the name. I presume it's Natalie Nakase. I presume if I have pronounced it incorrectly, my apologies. But this is an example of. A DEI hire, if I have seen it before, it is so in your face. The WNBA always wants to be first. They want to be first, first, first. They want to make the first of every. They want to give everyone a chance. Everyone gets a cookie. So what makes Natalie Nakase a qualified candidate to be the head coach of an expansion team. Teresa Weatherspoon didn't last a year in Chicago in her first head coaching role in the WNBA. You have here the candidates that I read up on that I found they had for this job were Tara Vanderveer. She was floated as an option, but her return to coaching seemed unlikely, but she was a candidate. She was discussed. L.A. Lakers assistant Lindsey Harding. She was also a candidate for, I believe, the Charlotte Bob, the Charlotte, was it the the Hornets job? Um, And Santa Cruz Warriors head coach Nick Kerr. That's a nepotism hire. (laughs) I mean, the fact that Nick Kerr is the head coach of a a G League team is, uh, yeah, that is uh, Steve Kerr's. Son, so Nick Kerr at 31 is already the head coach of a G League team. Man, he earned that job. Sure shit didn't. Oh, my word. That I just learned something today. You, are, you, are you telling me that Steve Kerr's 31-year-old son <clears throat> was a GA at Cal? Quality assurance assistant with the Spurs, assistant video coordinator with the Warriors, then play up player development for the Warriors, then head video coordinator for the Warriors. Then he became an assistant for the Santa Cruz Warriors for three years and is now the head coach of the Santa Cruz Warriors. He's 31. <sighs> Bro. <laughs> I, I talk about having a fast track to a, a, a career right there. Wow, that's crazy to me. But yeah, uh, uh, another unearned position in professional sports. You, usually, you'd have to last a little bit longer than a year recording and editing video. But hey, what do I know? Anyhow. And then, of course, the final candidate was Natalie Nakase. Um, that's what I saw here from the San Francisco Chronicle. 
they decide to hire Natalie Nakase. <clears throat> so what is her background? Her background, her extensive coaching career includes all of two se three seasons as an assistant for the Las Vegas Aces. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But if Tara Vanderveer wasn't taking this job, how the hell does Lindsey Harden not get this job offered? Like, this is not even a conversation. No, Golden State wanted to put out there that they hired the first Asian coach in a, in a city with a large Asian population. That's the definition of DEI hiring. Like, that. that is as... I, I I know the words. It, it, it's a it's a thirty thirty five percent of San Francisco is Asian, and I'm not saying there are not qualified Asian candidates for jobs. There's tons, I'm sure. But three years of being an assistant coach in the WNBA makes you the head coach of the of of, of an expansion team. Now. Expansion team in the WNBA is not going to be the same as an expansion team in the NBA. Expansion teams typically in the NBA are horrendous for a few years. I don't know how long will be horrendous as an expansion team in the WNBA, or even if they will be horrendous at all. I don't know. But you can assume that they're not going to be good. <clears throat> Her other... I mean, she's coached in Tokyo, Saitama, Agua Caliente, Clippers. So she was an assistant in the Clippers G League. She was an assistant with the Clippers. But yet she went. Uh, see, this is, she wasn't really an assistant. She was an intern. Uh, I'm, I'm reading this stuff here. She wasn't really a, a full-fledged assistant. So... Yeah, she, she was with this Agua Caliente Clippers. I guess this is their G League team as well. Before going to the Aces. Yeah, you're not going to the Aces to be an assistant if you were making all kinds of bread with the Agua Caliente Clippers. And if you were really an assistant with the Los Angeles Clippers. She was like a, a video coordinator type of assistant, probably, or player development type of assistant. I I, I don't know, and I don't, I don't care. I, I really don't know, and I don't care. But this is the typical type of hiring that a team – in the WNBA is going to make. You're going to make a hiring for optics. You're going to make a hiring because you want to be first because that's all I'm, every article I'm seeing here, all, every every article I'm seeing here about this is, oh my God, the first Asian, blah, 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 blah. I get it. She's Asian. I get it. I understand. She's Asian. And hearing she is the perfect, uh, <clears throat> this is from the, <clears throat> General manager of the Valkyries, Natalie is the perfect candidate to lead the Valkyries as our head coach. She exemplifies every character trait in what we are looking we're looking for in a head coach and possesses deep expertise across professional basketball, with the exception of she's never actually been a head coach. Her journey is representative of the grit and perseverance that our team will embody to achieve our ultimate goal of winning championships. Yeah. Tell that to someone who was born yesterday. Tell me, tell that to someone who was born. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, you, you can. Uh, ah, whatever. You know, I, I have a different idea. I, look, she's hosting a women's team. I, I, I have an ideology on coaching and I in coaching men and women. I think women should coach women and I think men should coach men. I've, I've always felt that way. That is just how I feel. It's how I feel even on a high school level, a middle school level, college level. I, I don't think there should be any men coaching, although I do think a team that in, includes Angel Reese needs a male figure if you don't have a strong female figure. But typically I would tell you that I think women should coach women and men should coach men. So – is it, it's fine overall. <clears throat> she got a job as a as a head coach in the, in the WNBA, but did she earn that job over Lindsey Harding? Maybe Lindsey Harding turned down the job. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't speak on that, but <clears throat> it seems a bit much that 
you hire someone with three years of coaching experience as an assistant in the WNBA and you make her the first coach of your franchise. I don't know. What do you think? You're in San Francisco, high Asian population. Let's go hire an Asian coach. DEI all day long. But that's what the WNBA has become. It's a DEI network. Diversity, equity, and inclusion for everything that is done, with the exception of if you actually are straight. Let me rephrase straight and white. Because it's okay if you're a married black woman to a man, but if you're a straight white woman, you might have a bit of, little bit more of a headache. There are still two male head coaches in the WNBA, Eric Tybal and uh, Nate Tibbetts. Um, yeah, I I don't, I mean, neither of them fared too well last year, so who knows how much longer they'll be coaching as head coaches. But for the most part, you have a league that lives on DEI hires, and this is nothing more than another DEI hire. You can criticize me if you want, but I bring you facts over feelings. That's what I do. You have a coach who got three years of coaching experience as an assistant for the Las Vegas Aces. Never had a head coaching job, and you're going to make her the head coach of an expansion franchise, one that is doomed for failure. At least in the NBA, they're always doomed for failure. You don't ever see a head coach of an expansion team last very long. So what does the WNBA do? They skip over a candidate that's clearly more qualified in Lindsey Harding, who has been an assistant coach in the, in the NBA um with sacramento as well i mean she was a full-time actual assistant with sacramento and also you know she was the head coach she was the head coach of the stockton kings which is the g league team but that's the as the head coach not an assistant she was their head coach and then finally obviously she's currently sitting in the role of assistant for the lakers now, how long, I mean, what her pay is and all that stuff, I, I don't know. But end of the day, this is someone who probably is slightly more qualified. Um, she certainly was qualified enough that she was certainly qualified enough that she was a candidate for the Charlotte Bo Hornets job. Like you're saying Bobcats, I don't know why. But she was certainly qualified enough in the opinion of the Charlotte Hornets that they made her a candidate. Again, I don't think women should coach men in the NBA. And I don't think men, men should coach women in the WNBA. But at least if we're going to start hiring people, how I, I, to, to tell me that you don't have better candidates than someone with three years of experience, that's mind-blowing to me. To tell me that there's not a – I mean, even of the three coaches that just got let go, I don't think whether Spoon's qualified enough, but of the other two that got let go, really? We we don't have people with actual more experience? No. What we want is we want to make be the first to make to hire an Asian coach. And that's how the WNBA rolls. So tell me I'm crazy if you want to. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts because I don't see how in the world you're going to tell me that someone with three years of experience as an assistant for the aces is enough to become head coach of a expansion team. I would say if you had five or six years, seven years, more lengthy time, yeah, then maybe, but three years. And it's just very convenient that it's San Francisco, which has probably the largest Asian population in the U S. So yeah, seems convenient to me. Who knows? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to pound that like button, subscribe, and let me know what you think. And head over to Rudy's Rant, at Rudy's Rant, and subscribe there as well on YouTube. Thank you so much. Facts over feelings. Come on now.